In this video, we will be covering the different aspects of finance management that is built into the Retail Business Manager Excel template. So this is our template where I have filled in some sample information already so that we can illustrate the different aspects of finance management here. And we are in the setting sheet now. And the first thing is to understand how the, the purchase costs and the selling prices are maintained. So we enter the price information here for both purchase and sales price for each product. And if the products, uh, the prices change over time, you can enter a new row with a new effective from date and the template will automatically accept that. Now, this information will be pulled into the order details when you write the line items of each order. Let's say this is a purchase order. You will see that the, um, the the price of the product is automatically pulled from the prices table. And then in addition, tax and discounts can be handled. So this is a product level discount, the unit discount. And then there can also be order level uh, discount. So when the order table or order headers, you will see order discount. So this order discount is the discount amount on top of any product level discount. For example, here, the, this specific product, we are giving a discount of five per unit. And then this purchase order, um, other than in addition to this unit discount for the product, the purchase order also has another additional discount of 10 overall. So that's how the discounts can be entered. The other charges, basically the this is a purchase order. So we know the amount before tax and amount after tax. On top of that, we can also have additional charges. So for example, this could be a shipping charge on the order. So we could enter any additional cost here. So in terms of taxes, the tax rate is entered here for this order. So the all the products in this specific order should have the tax rate applied. And so here we can see the tax is getting calculated for this order. It's important to understand that if a specific product should not be taxed, then you can set that here and say no. This means that in the order details, wherever that product appears, the tax will not be applied. So let's say, for example, this is MSBL. Right now we see a tax being applied of 10% for this order. But let's say I go here. Let's find MSBL here. There we go. And let's say I do not want tax to be applied to this product. Then I say no. I go back here you will see the tax amount zero out. So this is how you can control the tax uh, at the order level, but you can also choose specific products to be completely not taxed at all from the products table. So we covered taxes and discounts. And now the other piece is when a payment is made. When a payment is made on the order, whether it's a purchase order or a customer sale, where do you maintain it? So in the order headers table, we see two columns towards the end. The total order amount is adding up all the product level uh, prices and costs, and then it uh, takes into account the additional charges, discount, everything, and gives you the final order amount. And then when somebody makes a payment, you enter that here. If the payment is made in multiple installments, it's still you enter the total amount paid so far here. Let's take this example. This order, the purchase order, the total order amount is 2999 but the payment we have made so far is 2992 and so the due amount is 7 so let's say we did make a payment 2999 and then now it'll say zero so we, we don't have any due on that account on that order so in order to filter to the list of orders which are due then you can just select this filter now, so now you can see only the orders where there is a due and it could be both purchase or sale. And if you want to restrict only to purchase orders, so then you can go here and say purchase orders. So all the purchase orders with a due amount, positive due amount. And then similarly, all the sale amount where customers are owing you money, you can do a filter on sale and then you do a filter on due amount. This is how you can easily get to the data on which orders are due and who is uh, due a payment. And you can also filter on the specific partner name or due date and all this. So all of this information is readily accessible for you. Now, the other aspect of this is to see this information reflect in the report. 
So you can see when you go to the report, the first sheet shows you the amount accounts receivable and accounts payable, and then the amount that is current versus amount current past due. And then you can also see a breakdown of the past due aging. Uh, it's been uh, up to 30 days past due, 60 days, 90, and greater than 90. You can see both from the receivable side and the payable. Payable is the amount that we have to pay to our suppliers. Receivable is the amount that we are expecting from our customers for our sale orders. And then towards the end of this report sheet, we also have a section of partner performance where you can choose a specific partner and you can see the purchase or the sale related uh, data for that partner. And you can see the past due aging uh, and the amount due, amount current and all of this for one partner at a time. Now the final part of this is you can also track operational expenses. In the expenses sheet, we can enter the date and any expense. So anything other than the product purchase order amount. So for example, if you have any expenses around shipping items or stationery or other miscellaneous expenses that you may have in terms of operating your business, excluding purchasing of the products, because we already are entering the purchase cost of the products in the orders. So we don't have to enter them again here. But other than that, all other expenses, you could enter this here. And the way this will be reflected is when we go to the report sheet, when we look at uh, the total expenses will be captured here. In addition, we can use that to calculate profit. So for example, in the monthly metrics, you'll see the sales amount, the cost of the goods sold, and then the gross profit is the sale amount minus the cost of goods sold. And then the operating expenses is the expenses that we enter here and that will be summed up here. Net profit will be gross profit minus operating expenses. So that is how the net profit can be calculated um, for our business. And this table will reflect up to 12 months and uh, you can customize the date range of this by entering the start and end date. And, um, and also you can see the monthly trend of these operating expenses or net profit or gross profit in a visual chart here. And um, the profit will also be summed up for the entire period here in terms of gross profit and net profit. So these are the different aspects of finance management that is already built into this template, which are automatically calculated for you uh, to help make the right decisions for the business. If there are any questions about the features that we discussed in this video, please leave them in the comments and I'll be very happy to respond. Thank you very much for watching this video.